Sometimes epidemiologists need to determine the difference between two potential exposures and which one is the more likely cause of an outbreak of disease. In this video, we're going to talk about conducting cross-tabulation in an epidemiological investigation and how to do it by hand through deduction. Many times you can conduct cross-tabulation using an Excel spreadsheet, but you don't always have an Excel spreadsheet available. In many cases, as you investigate and interview potential subjects, you'll end up with a series of data in a spreadsheet called a line list. Line listing sometimes looks like this. As you can imagine, organizing this information can sometimes be difficult. Let's say you had 1,300 subjects like we do in this case. This information can be challenging. Now, Excel can complete that cross-tabulation for you. However, sometimes you don't have that luxury and all you have is just notes from your interviews. First, we need to start to think about how populations can be separated. And I like to use this little graphic. If we can imagine putting everybody into a big room, we could ask everyone who had been exposed to something A and those who had not been exposed to that same thing to move over to that side of the room, over to this side of the room. If they're already in the room, we can also ask them, all of you who have been exposed to B move to the front of the room and those who have not been exposed to B move to the back of the room and separate them like that. So now we have people who have been exposed to both A and B, those who have been exposed to B but not A, those who have been exposed to A but not B, and those who have been exposed to neither. Now we can also ask them, any of you who have been sick move over to the edge of your square. And so if we did that graphically, that would be that group of people there, this group of people here, and so on and so forth. By conducting this analysis, we're able to determine if B or if A is more likely to cause the condition. And we have to look at that mathematically a little bit. So if we look at this example, let's say you're investigating an outbreak at a resort in the Mediterranean, and there were 1,300 people at this resort, and 89 of them got sick. So you conduct an investigation, you interview all the people and ask them what they ate in the past 36 hours or so. And the information you come up with looks like this. Those who've eaten dates, 163, six of them were sick, spinach, and so on. You'll notice that people who ate zucchini and people who ate pork had the highest rates of illness. If we can determine how many people ate both foods and were sick, then we can complete a cross tabulation that looks like this. To tell us the most likely cause of illness. This is the way we would do that. First, we need to understand that there were 1300 total people. Well, the totals are represented here, 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 and here. I like to draw a little line that helps me understand that those total numbers are going to equal 1300. We also know that 89 people are sick. That's going to be this group, this group, this group, and this group. So again, I'm going to kind of keep track that those two totals are going to be 89 people. Now we can keep track of totals in the column total by writing the number underneath here. This plus this is going to give you a total number. So if we look at the pork group over here, we see that 41 people total ate pork. We don't know whether they ate zucchini or not, but 41 people that ate pork were sick. Those 41 people are represented down here. We also know that, that there were 353 total people that ate pork. So we would write that there. As you can see, if there's 89 total people who are sick and 41 ate pork, then the rest of them did not eat pork. And that total is 48. We can also note that out of the 1300, 353 ate pork, so the rest did not eat pork. And if you take 353 out of 1,300, you end up with 947 total people who did not eat pork. Now, we should be able to calculate the people who are well because you are either sick or you are well. You can't be almost sick. So if there's 353 total people that ate pork and 41 of them were sick, that means that 312 were well. And if there were 947 people who did not eat pork and 48 of them were sick, then 899 
or well. So this is a good start. We also know through our investigation that 184 people ate both the pork and the zucchini. That 184 would be represented in our two by two table or our cross tabulation table right there. We also know that out of that 184, 27 people were sick. Out of the 184, if 27 are sick, that means 157 are well. Now we can do the math up and down pretty easily because these columns must equal the totals at the bottom. So 41 minus 27 is 14, and 312 minus 157 is 155, and 353 minus 184 is equal to 169. So through deduction, we were able to identify the people who ate pork but did not eat zucchini. Well, if we can do that with pork in this up and down math, we should be able to do that same thing with zucchini across the top. So if we go back here to our zucchini group, we should be able to see that there were 55 total people who were sick that ate zucchini. So that's this whole group across the top ate zucchini. So that would include those people who are sick and those people who are sick. We don't care whether they ate pork or not yet. So that has to equal 55. So 27 minus 55 is going to give us 28. We can do that same thing with our total. 388 total people are represented both here and here. And I just wrote that kind of small at the top just to keep a reminder that those two are go together, similar to these lines that I drew up here to the 55. Well, 388 minus 184 leaves 204 left over. And then I can erase this 388 because now I've kept track of where they are. 204 minus 28 gives us our well people, and that is 176. Now through deduction, we can get this last group that had neither food. In the line listing that we had, we would have had to count a whole bunch of empty cells in that Excel spreadsheet. This makes it so much easier by doing it through deduction. 48 minus 28 is 20. 899 minus 176 is 723. If we add 20 and 723, we get 743. That would also be the case if we had 947 minus 204. We also would get 743. We can quickly do the cross tabulation math to get each of these answers and find out the attack rates for each of these groups. Those who had both pork and zucchini, those who had pork but no zucchini, those who had zucchini but not pork, and those who had neither, similar to our group down here. And now we can just conduct the attack rate. So if we take 27 divided by 184, we should get 14.67%. And 14 divided by 169 should give us 8.28 percent. 28 divided by 204 gives us 13.73 percent. And 20 divided by 743 gives us 2.69 percent. The way we can read and interpret this data is by looking at the attack rates of each group independently. And we're really comparing those who had pork without zucchini, and those who had zucchini without pork. So this group compared to this group. We see that the 13.73 is much closer to those who had both, and it's very close. It's actually just a little bit more than the rate you get by dividing 89 by 1300. Therefore, we would conclude the zucchini is the likely cause of the outbreak. Some would ask, well, we have to consider this 8.28%. We do. And so the next step in our investigation would be to determine who cooked the pork, who, how did they prepare the zucchini, and see if there's any potential cross-contamination or other potential situations where both exposures could have um, what we call bled over or caused illness in both the pork group and the zucchini group. I hope this is helpful in understanding cross-tabulation and attack rates for epidemiology.